Hello and welcome to module 43 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Today we are going to discuss some neat application. We have been looking at uh, unimol, uh, we have been looking at uh, micro canonical rate constants that is uh, rate constant at a given energy. Now you may ask why have we been looking at it at all. So we will uh, look at the problem that was historically studied why these uh, theories were originally developed which is to understand unimolecular decay. So, this is something we discussed in our very first few modules and we will now today look at it in uh, much more details that we understand uh, rate constants a lot more now. Okay. So, a quick recap this is from module 2 or 3. Uh, I have a unimolecular decay meaning I have only one A that is uh, single handedly going to some product P, okay, one reactant only. So, uh, this was very deeply studied in 1910s and 1920s. So, we are trying this seemed to be the easiest problem to start investigating in chemical kinetics and people spend a lot of attention on it. All right. So, one mechanism that was proposed and that is what we discussed in our earlier modules is that uh, rather than A directly going to B that actually does not match this experiment at all. What was proposed is that two molecules of A collide with each other to give you A star plus A and uh, this I was not able to put the equilibrium constant very well. So, this is my creative way of writing. Uh, this is really equilibrium, this is k1 and this is k minus 1. And A star uh, finally uh, decomposes to give you B, all right. That is our mechanism. I can build kinetics on top of it. So, I can find what is dA over dt, dA star over dt and dB over dt. Then we make the steady state hypothesis which assumes dA star over dt is 0 and dA star over dt you can easily show is given by this expression you get 3 terms because A star appears 3 times one is here, one is in the forward direction here and one in the backward direction. So, you get uh, corresponding A star in these uh, rate law equations and the steady state hypothesis is that the uh, intermediate uh, population does not changes with time. So, we set that to 0 and finally, the rate which is nothing but dB over dt is equal to k2 into A star, B appears only here and then we use this equation to calculate A star and eliminate A star out and uh, finally, get rate as this. Okay, so, this is something we studied a long time ago. Uh, now, finally, I can uh, uh, express rate uh, as some k into concentration of A. So, this let me define it this way only. It is this uh, is not uh, elementary, but I can always define k1 as this. So, uh, I can calculate this uh, k1 as then k1 k2a over k2 plus k minus 1 into a. I have divided by a capital A on both sides. So, clearly this k1 is not independent of concentration, it is not a number at a given temperature. Okay, depends on concentration of A. Clearly showing that A going to B is not elementary in this model. Okay. So, today let me just uh, point out uh, that this model is not complete. There are few issues with it. So, uh, in 1910s and 20s itself, some experimentalist had plotted 1 over K1 versus 1 over pressure of A. So, let me uh, massage my equation to have uh, 1 over k1. So, 1 over k1 is nothing but k2 plus k minus 1 of a. Let me just simplify this and write this as uh, k minus 1 over k1 k2 plus 1 over k1 a. And basically these experiments were done in gas phase. So, pressure is proportional to concentration, just ideal gas law. So, this is then uh, equal to some constant let me call this C plus some m into 1 over pressure. Okay. 
c is nothing but k minus 1 over k1, k2 and m is nothing but proportional to 1 over k1 because pressure is proportional to concentration of air. So, you see uh, what we have got is 1 over k1 is equal to some m x plus c where x is 1 over pressure. So, my prediction is at a given temperature if I plot 1 over k1 versus 1 over pressure I should get a straight line correct that is uh, this is an equation of a straight line. This is the experimental result in front of you. So, I have actually taken the data and plotted it on, on some graph. This is not a straight line, it is clearly deviating correct. So, we have a problem, uh, we get something that is reasonable, it is not completely off the charts. I mean in some degree I mean th this portion is starting to look like a straight line almost, but you see something happens here. So, we have to try to understand it now. Okay. Uh, why is it? What has went wrong in our model? So, what did we miss really? Our model seems pretty good. The model is still pretty good. There is something very fundamental and very nuanced uh, point that we missed. So, let me try to impress that upon you. Uh, let us just uh, now we have started thinking in the language of energy surfaces. We have A here, we have B here. Where is A star? That is the question you should start thinking. Pause the video and uh, tell me where is A star. Okay. So, think about it. I will give the answer in 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A star is not this point. A star is simply an excited energy level here. Okay. Uh, remember transition state is a very specific point on energy coordinate. There is one given potential energy. A star has can have more energy than the transition state. A, A star can be many different possible structures. A star is not the transition state. But A star has some high energy E here. So, the model that I have here is that this is k1, this is k minus 1 and uh, uh, once I get here this is k2. Okay. So, uh, k1 pumps me up to the excited state, k2 will drive me to the product side and k minus 1 uh, depletes my population in state energy E. The subtle point is the following, we have been taking these k, k1, k-1 and k2 independently. We are thinking of them as 3 independent numbers as a function of temperature. They are not independent, that is the point, or correlated. What does it mean? It means the following. Uh, what is exactly K1? K1 effectively is that two molecules of A collide with each other giving me an energized product at a given energy E not at a given temperature T. One collision will lead me to one energized state and this energized state can either go towards become a product or have another collision and become de-excited. Okay. So, K1 k minus 1 and k 2 are better thought of as independent numbers, but functions of energy. Okay. Temperature is an ensemble average, but at a given energy all these three things are happening. You go, go up to this energy E and that, that energy A you either go forward or you come down. Okay. So, this is a very nuanced point, Start, try thinking about this, it is really a matter of time scales at the end of the day. If everything was uh, uh, k2 was very very fast then it would not have mattered, but these three numbers are really inter interacting with each other. So, we cannot uh, just make this k1, k minus 1, k2 as a function of temperature and uh, get away with it. Okay. So, what we actually do this is back to our expression of k1, we so far 
were thinking of these as independent numbers as a function of temperature at a given temperature. This is a bad approximation. The correct way to think about it is uh, that we have this graph with us. This is let us say E a, E star is somewhere here, uh, A star. This is let us say energy E, this is K 1, this is K minus 1 and this is K 2. We are going to calculate these things at a given energy. and then integrate them over all possible energies and energies of course will range from E a to infinite. You cannot have energy less than E a because then uh, no reaction can happen. K 2 will be 0 below energy E a. Okay. So, that is our new novel idea. This is what uh, R R and K did. So, we discussed this RRK theory earlier, Rice, Ramsberger and Cassell and that was their uh, uh, major breakthrough. They said uh, you know you have been calculating these numbers as a function of temperature, but that is not correct. You should be calculating them as a function of energy and integrating over all possible energies. Okay. So, we have this, I will massage this a little bit to get into a form that is uh, better to understand. I will divide both numerator and denominator by k 1 a uh, sorry k minus 1 a. So, I am dividing by uh, let me write k minus 1 a. So, I will get k 1 over k minus 1 into k 2 divided by 1 plus k 2 over k minus 1. And all these things are function of energy, I am not writing them as explicitly I think, but it should be understood now. Okay. Uh, just a quick point, this uh, quantity that we had now k 1 over k minus 1, this represents the equilibrium constant. or between A and A star. Okay. So, that is the reason that I uh, massaged my equation to have the form which has k 1 over k minus 1, because that is an easier quantity to calculate. Okay. So, now the question becomes how do we calculate these quantities, how do we calculate this k 1 and k minus 1 and k 2. So, there are two different treatments that we will look at. One is what this R, R and K have done. Uh, this was in early, nine, this was in late 1920s, 27 and 28. And then we will follow it up with even better treatment that came with Marcus, R, R, K, M and see what uh, even improved treatment can be done. So, this is where the th two theories that we discussed for micro canonical rate constant will be used. Thank you very much.